Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, all you need is hope and strength. Hope that it will get better, strength to hold on until it does. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you Convener District Governor 2324, Dr. Siva Anandan again for the closing session. Thank you. I think, you know, we all need to give Tani a big round of applause for the amazing job he has done over the last two days for us, okay? He is truly an incredible Rotarian, a selfless Rotarian, okay? He has foregone his lunch, his dinner, everything just to be our MC. I think he's done an incredible job. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. yeah. And also, let's put our hands together to thank our MC from last time, Yasmin, who also was fantastic. Okay? So my friends, we've come to the end of our one-day training seminar for, of course, the President's two days since you started yesterday with your pets. The Secretary is also two days. Set, the Treasurer is also two days. You started yesterday with Ted. Okay? So, I hope that in the last two days, we have given you value for your time. Because your time is valuable. Right? Rotarians often say, you know, the district pays for this, the district pays for that. Okay? So therefore, you know, you are lucky to be here. Actually, it's the other way around. Right? Because at the end of the day, your time is valuable. And we cannot take your time for granted. I believe that we owe a duty to each and every one of you to give you something of value when you come to this kind of trading events. Alright? Rather than bring you here, charge you money, and then pour the shit out of you. Okay? I hope that's not what we have done. I hope we've done our best to try and make it interesting, interactive, because your opinions also matter to us. Right? As Gordon said, we have to create a collaborative environment because we are all leaders in our own right. And in Rotary Year 2324, as I told the presidents and the secretaries and the treasurer, uh, treasurers yesterday, we will run this district flat where all Rotarians will be treated with equal dignity. There is no hierarchy. There will be no titles that we can lord over you. That we are all the same. We are all in this together. We will sink or swim together. Alright? And so, for me, being a district governor is just a job description. I have things to do. I am expected to do certain things. I will do it. It does not give me any preeminence or privilege over you. Alright? And I assure you that last night's demonstration where there were no VIP tables and I was seated somewhere in table 19 or something like that, that is the way it's going to be going forward. Why? Because at the end of the day, I have no special claim to sit in front and put everybody at the back. Neither do you as a club president. Don't put yourself in front and put all your members at the back. Right? In fact, the people who should be in front are the newest members you have. So that you can engage them. You can involve them and show that they are important to you. Because if you don't show them that they are important, and give them the job to carry the tray and to carry the mace and be the sergeant at arms, why should they be part of this organization? Right? Let us treat everybody with that resolve going forward. Right? And our motto going forward is clubs come first. I hope that Armin will embrace this. I hope that Edward will embrace this. Our governor this year has already started this. Alright? Where we put clubs front and center, and the district is no longer a strain for the clubs. How does the district become a strain for the clubs? I, as district governor, keep calling you and tell you I want money for this, I want money for that, I'm doing this district project, I'm doing that district project. The money that you could have used for your club project, I'm asking you to give me. That's the way I can be a strain to you. I can be a strain to you by saying, I'm having this district event, that district event, and every other event, five events in a month, and I simply send your members. Instead of attending your club meetings, where other people can come and join your club, they will be at district events, and they will be missing from your club meetings, and so when your guests come, instead of 25 people sitting in the room, they'll be 10. This is the way I can be a strain to you. Right? And I hope that I will not impose on you. Why? Because we have to reverse the relationship. We have to reverse engineer the relationship between the district and the clubs. Clubs come first means if 
I volunteer with this street governor, then it's my job to go out there and look for people who are not Rotarians who will give me money so that I can bring it into Rotary and give it to you. And say to the club, you're doing a project, what's your budget? Oh, governor, our budget is $30,000. How many people can you reach with this? 300 people. I should be able to say, here yeah, the district is giving you another 10, reach 400 people. This is the function of a district. The function of a district is to strengthen clubs. And so going forward, I would like to appeal to all of you here that when the time comes, when you have me or any other district officer coming to you and saying, we need this, give us this money, we are going to do this project, that project. Use that famous song by Megan Trainer and say no. Just say sorry, no. Right? We need to work on our club because we only have 25 members. We want to get to 30 by the end of the year or 40 by the end of the year. We are going to use every resource at our disposal to achieve that goal. Rather than the district is great, I shake the hands of Anwar Ibrahim, and then suddenly Anwar Ibrahim gives me a national award for being the greatest human being in Malaysia. How does that benefit Rotary? It does not benefit Rotary at all. So my friends, let's rethink the relationship. And I appeal to all those of you who are members of action groups. Right? Number one, no other district in the world has a district action group except our district. There are Rotary action groups. Action groups that are sanctioned by the Board of Rotary International. But we have action groups. Why? Because Rotarians have got together, they found matters of common interest and they want to pursue it. Fine, no problem. But when you pursue it, it must not be again a drain on the clubs. Right? You, the, the function of an action group is to again bring resources into Rotary. It is my job as, say, the chairman of a action group to go out, talk to the government, talk to the different NGOs, talk to the different corporates and say, okay, these are the things you want to do because mental health is important to you. And so now I throw to the clubs and say, listen, any of you want any of the following things, please take and do the project. That's how an action group should operate. An action group should not be operating by saying, we want to do this project and you give us 500 each. That's not how it should operate. Okay, so going forward, our goal is clubs come first, Resources to the clubs, not away from the clubs. Step one. Step two. You know, we have a population of 30 million people in this country. And we spent 30 years climbing out of 1,800, 1,700 Rotarians to 2,000 Rotarians. 30 years we spent doing that. We became 3300 in 1991. And we became 2,000. 100, 2,200 members in 2020, 2021 under Theopon Suite. Right? So now I'm telling you this. If we can do it then, why can't we do it now? As Mandela said, something is only impossible until it's done. So the target I've set for all of you is goal 3,000. Goal 3,000 means by the end of June 30th, 2024, let's be 3,000 members. Right? It's not an incredible uh, goal, actually. It's, uh, you know, by my standards, I think it's a bit low because it just means that you clubs, we have 86 clubs, go back to your normal strength. Charter strength is 25 plus 5 is 30. If every club is 30 and we have 86 clubs, we are already 2,700 members. If we charter another 10 new clubs or 15 new clubs with 30 members, we have 3,000 members. But why does this dream see so, seem so implausible? Because 70% of our clubs are in the 20, 21 and below membership range. And so my friends, I ask you an honest question. If you could find 25 people to charter your club, why can't you find another 5 people to go to 30? Why is it that when you want to charter, it's so easy to find 25 people? So think about that and think about rebuilding your clubs. I understand that in some places it is a challenge. I recognize that. So the district membership task force, the district membership committee under Raj, and now he is also assisted by three more chairs 
the district new club development chair Trocking Sun, the district membership attraction chair Pippi Mahindran, and the district engagement chair past district governor Baskaran. Four of them will now put their resources together to help you. And if you are a club somewhere, let's say for example in Kota Baru Sam, you feel that you need some help to promote Rotary, let us know. We'll all go to Kota Baru and help your club run an event to try and make more people interested in coming into Rotary. So you are not alone, right? The district has to stop preaching and has to start doing. This is, this is what I believe, mean, okay? So, for me, let's start it. I've given all my assistant governors that 27 of them, 27 groups. I said these 27 groups, each, must, each group must charter one club, be it a road track club or a road track club, doesn't matter, right? But every four or five clubs together cannot charter one new club. That's not good. Let's try, right? My presidents are very, very ready to make the effort to try and achieve this, right? So, the rest of you have to help them. Why? Because no person can do it alone. I certainly can't do it alone. But I think if we grow by chartering new clubs, that is an effective strategy. That's how we got past 2000. We chartered four new clubs, eight new satellite clubs. We got past 2000. Alright? Because as your Consul always tells me, it's easier to give birth than to raise the dead. Okay? So, I think that's what we should do. And one of the things we are going to do, which I hope you will all participate in, you know, we need some fun in Rotary, right? And every year I go to the district conference, we pay a band, five, six thousand dollars, seven thousand, eight thousand, for them to entertain us. We sit down, we eat, we get drunk, and then we go back home, right? Why pay them this eight thousand, ten thousand dollars? We got a lot of entertainers in Rotary. Right? I don't know whether you realize, but we've got some fantastic stingers in Rotary. Right? And I'm telling you this as the reigning Rotary karaoke champion. I mean, I, you don't realize this, but the last time our Rotary district had a district-wide karaoke competition was when PDG Laudian was governor. And they ran a competition of trophies still in my house. Okay? And I just got on stage, I sang for shit. But I took off my jacket and everything and threw everywhere and the judges I think got confused, they gave me the trophy. Okay? So, we are now going to re revisit that crime scene. We're going to revisit that crime scene and we are now going to run a Rotary Idol competition. Okay? The district special event secretary, Savvy To, is in charge of the Rotary Idol competition. And we will do one up north, we will do one in the east coast, and we will do one in the center with the Grissom Milan and the Clang Valley Slang Home Clubs. Okay? And the winners and the finalists, three or four of them, whoever from these regions qualified, they will perform in the final of the Rotary Idol competition at the district conference. Right? The winner will get 5,000 ringgit for their club projects. Right? Runner up 3,000 ringgit, third place 2,000 ringgit. This is our entertainment budget for the Rotary conference. Correct? But this money now goes to do good. Don't you think it is a good idea? And to be fair to everybody, as the reigning champion, I disqualify myself. Okay? I mean, I'm sure you heard my prowess this morning, you know. I still have a bit of... Um, only thing now, I don't think I'll take off my jacket. Uh, there's too much to show. Okay? So, my friends, okay, we're going to do that. So, this is the way we attract people into Rotary by doing something interesting. And so, when we have the competition in Pinhang, or, you know, in Butler, or wherever, in Ipoh, or whatever, Invite all your friends who are not Rotarians to come and have fun with us. And during the evening while we are singing and enjoying ourselves, we'll talk a bit about Rotary. Right? Share some ideas with them. And hopefully they'll be interested enough to join Rotary Club in Kosov, to join Rotary Club of uh, Greentown, to join Rotary Club of Tanjung Bunga. This is a strategy we have to adopt. We have to become interesting and fun for people to want to be with us. Right?
So that is as far as membership is concerned. As far as TRF is concerned, my TRF chair city is working so hard for the last two years. And so in her final years, TRFC, we have to give her a good bye-bye. We have to give her a good farewell. On June 30th, when she finishes at TRFC, she should become Regional Rotary Foundation Chair because she has raised more than a million dollars. Right? Can we achieve that? Right? Can we achieve that? Yes, together we can. Because, number one, all right, during the last district conference, there was some debate about the endowment fund. And while this was going on, okay, I just kept quiet. Some resolutions were not, uh, they didn't come in time. It was not carried. Some people were very upset. But why do we need a district resolution to do something that is right? If a club creates a named endowment of 25,000, and the interest from that named endowment comes back to the district every year, 4 or 5%, whatever the, the profit of that 25,000 US comes back to the district. Okay? And hitherto, it's been part of the district fund. The governor has used it for disaster relief or whatever. So now I'm saying, why should we do that? This money comes back on your name endowment, it goes back to your club. Right? You create a name endowment of 25,000 for the rest of your club's existence, Whatever money comes from RI on that 25,000 goes back to your project account every year. Think about that. Right? Let's do that. Okay? That means it's only fair. Correct? You raise the money, your club contributes the money. You give 100,000 and let's say Rotary kicks us back 4,000 USD every year, it goes back to you. You keep it in your club, do your projects with it. That's what clubs come first means. What the club does, the benefit must go back to the club, then the club can become strong, people who want to join that club, Rotary will be strong, our district will be 30,000 members. Right? And by that time, it will not be 30,000 members, and don't think it's a, it's a remarkable thing, the, the, the city of Manila, which is more or less, just a bit larger than Kuala, the Klangan. Manila has four Rotary districts. Malaysia has one and a half. Right? Because the other one we share with Brunei and Singapore. Think about it. Right? So what I'm telling you is doable. But we must believe that we can do it. So I encourage you to give money to the foundation. I told the presidents, I expect every club to give money to the foundation. How can you be a Rotarian and not support your own foundation? You know what? 40% of our clubs don't give one cent to the Rotary Foundation. That's an abomination in my mind. Right? So redeem. Give the money for polio. Give the money as an annual fund. Or give the money to the, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to the endowment fund. Alright? And over time, build up a sizable endowment for yourself. That's what you should do. Alright? So think about that, my friends. Okay? As far as district initiatives are concerned, I think Gordon, our president Gordon has already said. Right? Let's work to elevate road track. Let's create more diversity in our clubs. Let's do projects to empower women, right? Because this is now an initiative that is worthwhile pursuing. And RI is encouraging us. So as a club, I want you to consider, okay? And when you do projects to empower girls, empower women, okay? Don't do projects that are like, you know, what we hear all the time is there's going to be a seminar. In a seminar, it's just talk, 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 right? And after that, you say you empower the women. How? How do you empower them? For me, you want to empower women, find the women that are neglected, find the women that are suffering, from example, from domestic abuse. Set up a shelter home for victims of domestic abuse. I will tell you, predominantly, they will be women. Right? And it's a real problem in this country. Create a coalition against domestic violence. Right? This is the way you can support the growth of women who are being discriminated against or who are suffering. Okay, so this is some of the thoughts I have. And as far as peace is concerned, try to undertake some project to promote peace. One of the ways you can do it is to support the district BTT effort. Now you have to get a, a vocational training team going to another country. Get to know what they are doing there. Get them to come here. Get to know what we are doing here. Try to build bridges between different communities. Right? And uh, as far as mental health is concerned, 
Gordon said, you know, sometimes we spend a lot of time caring about other people. We don't care about each other. We say very unkind things to one another. Perhaps it's time for us to be the service of self to the world, to also be the service of self to each other. Right? That we can talk to other with a little bit more kindness, okay? And that we can reflect more on some of the things that we are doing. Okay? Now, as far as promote Rotary is concerned, I want to tell you something. Okay, recently I undertook an experiment. Okay? Um, you see, I am very tech, not very savvy. But some, I've been watching all these TikTok videos. Because early on I uploaded some videos to YouTube. You know, uh, very long videos, 45 minutes. One hour, wherever I talk, I upload the video. 450 people watch it. Right? 450 people. So I decided this TikTok is interesting. So I took those videos, I cut it into one minute, three minutes, two minutes, you know, just experiment. I created a TikTok account with Dr. Dr. Siva. Hint, hint, hint. Okay? I created a TikTok account with Dr. Dr. Siva. And then I started uploading these talks, some of the stuff. Okay? Do you know? Today, right? Today, I have nearly 20,000 views on my TikTok account on all the videos that I've posted. And I've not even asked you to friend me yet. Right? I just experimented it as an initiative for Rotary 2324. And now PI Chef Chinlong has left upon it. He said, we will create a district account. We'll ask all your clubs to create a TikTok account. You post all your stuff. We will link the whole thing. So that it will become like a mega, mega, mega engine for public image, for public image building, for public image reach. Okay? So I will invite every club to consider doing this. Right? Just spend uh, half an hour every day, all right, looking at a camera and saying, the four-way test. Is it a missile to be flung at others? Or is it a mirror upon which I reflect upon my own actions? When I deal with others, should I consider whether what I'm doing is true what I'm doing is truthful? Should I consider whether what I'm doing is fair? Should I consider whether what I'm doing is beneficial uh, will, will build goodwill and better uh, friendships and whether it will be beneficial to all? I think this is a good test. Just post it and see what happens. Right? Because people are watching TikTok, they're watching the, all the girls doing this. In between your video will come. Right? The video will come and they'll say, hey, what is this? Alright? Maybe you'll encourage them to watch better videos. I don't know. Right? But let's try this experiment for a year. Let's see whether it works. Okay? In the two months I've run my TikTok account, I've had 10 inquiries. People ask me, how do I join a rotary club? And I passed these names to different people, okay? And so far, five of them have joined. Right? Not my rotary club, any rotary club. Right? I just find out where they are, and I pass it to the nearest rotary club. I pass to Tlang, I pass to Bangsa, okay? And so for me, I think this is also a good way to generate leads, okay? So you try it yourself. You try it yourself, and let's see how this experiment goes, all right? I think it's important for us to communicate better. You know, every year we have district conference. Every year we have district assembly. How many of you are here? 500 people. The last two days, slightly more than 500 people. Pet sets, stats, discuss registration, dinner, total, 500 over people. Okay. Tomorrow, when I go back home, Tuesday, after Labor Day, I get up, I look at the Google, I look at the Google group, the email, there will be one message. Congratulations, good training and assembly. It's not very motivating. Right? So, I'm going to tell you all. Right? Go on to the Google group and write your experience. Good or bad, doesn't matter. Share with the whole district what you've experienced in this district training and assembly. No point coming and patting me in, uh, in the back and saying, you know, uh, the talk, there was a very good talk. I really enjoyed it. Right? Because whenever you tell me that, I'm reminded of the story of this fellow speaker who was speaking and there's a queue of people telling him you're a good speaker, very good, wonderful, and there was a kid. And when the kid came to him, he said, Mr. I want to tell you there was a lousy talk. And so he said, who is this kid telling me? They said, don't worry, don't worry, he's just a stupid boy. And people will let him queue up, you know, all the other two people come out of the city, all the queue up, they say, see what, well, that's very good, fantastic, excellent, very good, very good, very good. Again, this little boy, 
come first. Alright? So my friends, I hope the day that you've spent has been productive to you. I hope that by meeting everybody, it has made your life more colourful. Right? And the colours represent our diversity and it represents our differences. Our differences should not divide us, they should unite us because it is the source of our strength. I end by saying, sharing with you what literally shared with me after my talk uh, this morning. And it's wonderful. She, this is a, a, a quote from Emily Dickinson. It's, it goes like this. Hope is the thing with feathers. Right? That means hope can elevate you. It can make you soar like a bird. Yeah, it's a thing with feathers. And for myself, I hope that at the end of my year as governor, should I die? And even during the year if I should die, I hope I will be remembered in this way. In the words of Robert Burns, he said, an honest man, this is a eulogy, alright? He said, an honest man here lies and rests. The friend of man, the friend of truth, the friend of age, and a guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warm. Few heads with knowledge so informed. If there is another world, he lives in bliss. But if there is none, he made the best of this. That's how I want to go. That's how I hope we all go. Have safe journey back home for those of you who are traveling immediately. For those of you, of you who are not, please join me in the house of friendship. May God bless. What? Ah, so wait, I haven't finished yet. This man, Tani, is very bad. Tell you, you know, I tell you, I'm not even becoming the governor yet. Okay, I'm trying to get the the the, the thing, the better from Krishna. They are trying to take it from me before that. So, may God bless all of you and your families. Whatever has happened, if I have offended you in any way, if I have said anything now from the time I was born till now, please accept my sincere apologies. I have no more energy to fight with anybody. Okay? And now I'd like to call upon our district governor nominee, Arvind Kumar. Arvind, you, Gopi Kumar. And his organizing chair, is your organizing chair, we have discussed here. Yes, the organizing chair of the district training assembly is here. And perhaps we'll invite all the members of Bandasuna Kutani. Why don't you all come on stage? Right? Come. I can see here, yeah, Sarkuru is here. Okay. Please come on stage. And I would like to invite past assistant governor Ronnie Tan to be on stage. And we are now, prior to officially closing this event, I would now like to officially hand over the responsibility of organizing the 90th District Training Assembly to Arvind Yu Gopi Kumar, District Governor, Road Tree Year 24 25. And now, Assistant Governor Ronnie, past Assistant Governor Ronnie, on my behalf, as the organizing chair of this distance, will hand over this beautiful District 3300 flag, which you can imagine is now waving because there is wind. As the winds of change are coming, we will now pass it to District Governor 24-25 and his organizing chair, incoming Assistant Governor Dr. Raj from the Rotary Club of Plank Valley. Okay. You want to say a few words, uh, Arvind or Dr. Raj? Yeah? No, you're good? Okay, I've spoken too much already. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay. So, give them a big round of applause. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the 90th District Training Assembly. Alright? And with that... Okay? You will now see... Thank you, Arvind. Okay. You will now see a QR code. Okay? Please feel free to...
take up your phone and download the basically the feedback form. We appreciate your feedback. Whatever feedback you give about this training assembly, frankly, I don't care because I will pass everything to Arvind because I can't do anything to improve this training assembly anymore. Okay? So it will be passed to Arvind so that that feedback can basically guide them to make the next district training assembly better than this one. Okay? So my friends, thank you all for being here and for making this event as enjoyable as it has been. I won't use the word thank you for making this event a success because the success of this event is for you to say, not for me to say. Thank you, God bless, and yes, and this journey.